Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial equation. P is a polynomial and we are given an equation P of P of X plus one equals nine X plus seven. And we're going to be solving for P of X. So if F was given instead of P and we were told F is a function, then you could probably still solve this problem in a similar manner, but there will be more solutions. So that would be a good question actually, if instead of P being a polynomial, if it was a function, could we find solutions that are not polynomials? Anyways, let's see how we can solve these kinds of problems. Now, first of all, when it comes to polynomials, you need to think about the degree of a polynomial, which is a very important concept. A lot of times, if you have a polynomial equation, you want to think about what possible uh, degrees you could have. For example, is p of x a quadratic? Is it linear? Is it, uh, can it be, you know, the fifth power of something? All these questions. And how can you tell? So here's one thing to keep in mind. If you do the composition of p with itself, which is kind of like a p of p of x, by the way, it's not the same thing, but degree-wise, they are the same, right? Because the addition of one doesn't really make a difference, even if p is a constant, right? So this is like p of p of x, and if the degree of p of x, which we can use, uh, I guess, like deg, we can use degree, right? That for degree. Suppose the degree of p of x is n, then the degree of p of p of x is just going to be what? Think about it this way. You have x to the power n, and then p of p of x means replace the x with p of x in p of x. So it's going to look like this, p of x to the power n. That's going to be your new argument. And since p of x is x to the power n, it's going to be x to the power n to the power n. So kind of like a powering back to back. And that's going to become x to the power n squared because n times n is n squared. So if degree of p is n, then degree of p of p is n squared. General rule. So this is good because now we know that the degree of 9x plus 7 is 1 because it's x to the first power. In other words, this is linear, right? So the left-hand side should also be linear because... A linear polynomial cannot equal a quadratic, obviously, right? Okay, so how can p of p of x plus 1 be linear? Its degree must be 1. In other words, n squared equals 1. You see, that's what I meant by saying, oh, the degree plays an important role for solving these kinds of equations. Well, we have two options, right? If n squared is 1, n is either 1 or negative 1. But wait a minute, the degree cannot be negative. Can the degree be 0? Yes, if you have a constant polynomial, its degree is zero. What happens if you have zero polynomial? Does it have a degree? Some people say the degree is undefined. Anyway, so we can't use this and should be one. In other words, we have a linear polynomial. So all this work for nothing? No, not really. This is actually the most critical part. We were able to identify P of X, a group or a, as a class of polynomials, right? So P of X is a linear polynomial. P of x is linear, that's our conclusion, and this is super important. Now we can go ahead and assume that P of x can be written as ax plus b. Awesome. Now could we not start with the assumption that P of x is quadratic? Yes, we could. So we could have said, okay, suppose P of x can be written as ax squared plus bx plus c, and I could probably use different numbers, but anyways, and we would end up with a equals zero. If we plugged it in, if we use the cubic, then two coefficients would be zero. But there's a lot of work, and that doesn't guarantee what the p of x is going to be. That's why we kind of had to solve this equation and guarantee the degree of p of x. Make sense? Now, we're going to go back to our equation and plug this in. What was the original equation? I forgot. It was p of something, right? p of x plus 1 equals 9x plus 7. Awesome. So now we can go ahead and replace p of x with ax plus b. Let's do it. P of AX plus B plus 1 equals 9X plus 7. Let's go ahead and arrange this a little bit. Well, actually, it doesn't really need arranging because it's kind of like P of this. 
but p of something is a times something plus p. So now we're going to place x with ax plus b plus 1, of course, in both places. So p of ax plus b plus 1 is going to be from here a times ax plus b plus 1 plus b. So a, p basically takes the argument, multiplies by a, and adds b. That's the rule. Make sense? ax plus b. x is the argument. Great. Now, this should equal 9x plus 7. Let's go ahead and expand it. a squared x distribute plus ab plus a plus b equals 9x plus 7. And these are polynomials that are identical for all values of x in the domain, and the domain is the set of real numbers, of course, right? So what does that mean? It means that the coefficient of x needs to be the same on both sides. This means a squared equals 9, which gives us a is 3, or a is negative 3. The second piece of information comes from the constants. This number needs to equal 7. Because constants equal constants. By the way, why is that happening? If you think about it, let's say you have mx plus n and kx plus p as two polynomials that are equal. Once you identify that m and k are equal, these two are going to cancel out, leaving us with n equals p. Make sense? Great. Now, let's go ahead and uh, proceed with the second step, which is setting a b plus a plus b equal to 7. But we have two solutions from here again, because we have different values of a. If a is equal to 3, we're going to get 3b. Oh, man, we should have used 2b or not 2b. But anyways, you get the idea. Plus a plus b equals 7. This gives us 4b equals 4, which ends up with b equals 1. So a equals 3 gives us b equals 1. Let's go, go ahead and put that on the branch. And if a is equal to negative 3, we get negative 3b minus 3 plus b equals 7. This is going to be negative 2b or not to be, yay, equals 10. This means b is equal to negative 5. And of course, this is for a equals negative 3. So what's the conclusion? The conclusion is the following. Since p of x was able to be written as ax plus b, and for a equals 3, I have, I can probably write those as ordered pairs, right? If a is 3, then b is 1, or if a is negative 3, then b is negative 5. This gives us two solutions for p of x. p of x is either 3x plus 1 or p of x is equal to negative 3x minus 5. And if you plug these in, you're going to realize that both of them actually satisfy the original equation, which was p of p of x plus 1 equals 9x plus 7. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.